up, people? This is William Jones making videos about leaving religion. The purpose of the videos is to get you to think. Turn your brains on and think. And use logic and use reason and realize that religion is fake. All right, people. Making another video here. And I want to thank everyone that watched the uh, videos of my twin daughters, Chelsea and July. That's not her real name. July is not her name, but I respect her. Let her use that. Um, I thank y'all for watching their, their videos about their experience in living in Christianity under their father and how they each had their own experiences in college and came out. You know, and uh, they were very nervous doing the videos, but uh, I would tell them, do it. I'll help you do it. And, and in most cases, when I MC a lot of events, when we have family events, I'll, I'll be the MC of the event. And I say, what you got to realize is people do not like getting on the microphone. So for you to give your testimony, it's going to help somebody because you, you're going to say something maybe they would you know, maybe a little scared to say, but you have similar experiences and, and something you say is something they went through and you can help them. So they did it. It was hard for them to do it, believe me, but they did it. And I thank you everyone that watched it, left them some comments that they could see. Uh, it really went well. It really did. So uh, let me see what I'm going to do here now is discuss a few things on for my youngest daughter Kerrigan. I don't know if you can see it. I'm wearing her bracelet that she, she made for me. I don't know when she made it. She always makes bracelets. I keep them, put them away. I said, I'm just wearing one of her bracelets and say, I love you, Daddy. And the thing about these, one of the things about having girls I've learned, even though they get older, they still daddy's girls. You know, because Kerrigan just had a birthday and and she wanted me to make her a cake. So I made her a cake like I did back in the day. Little, was it a two layer or three layer? I think it was a two layer. I made a two layer. Homemade cake. It was just as ghetto as ghetto could be. Well, she loved it. So, grown woman wanted daddy cake. I don't get it. I just do what they want, want me to do. And everybody's happy, all right? So as I do this video, uh, I have not mentioned to other people, people also on, on Facebook. We still have the new Leaving Religion 2 Facebook group because they closed down the first group. So we have the second one up there, Leaving Religion 2. I cannot see around these glasses. Take these things off. So it's up there, Leaving Religion 2, T-O-O. -O. If you get a chance, you want to join, join it. It's up there. Speak your mind. Feel free. Now for this video, I just want to just speak on a few things because I've, I've been doing some, uh, I don't want to say research, but gathering information to do a video. And it's, it's taking me longer than I wanted to to get the information, but just to cover a few things and teach people some things. It's, it's coming. It's really coming. I finished the information today, so the video is coming. I'm, I'm going to kind of shoot these back to back and then post them, all right? But for today... For those of you watching this video, and mostly people who are watching the video have left religion, and we still do have some Christians who will watch this video to a certain point. They might not watch the whole video, they might watch the beginning. But a question that some of us who have left religion, and, and you have a whole different, you could say worldview or viewpoint on, on how things are, you know, the religion thing is just not as serious as it was when you was in it. When you were in it, it was so serious. You were so terrified of going to hell. You were just, basically, that's the main thing is everybody's terrified of going to hell. But, it was, and you know, and you had to give God credit for everything. And now that you're out of it, you're like, it's, it's just really not that serious. It's not. It's just a belief. And it's, it's just not serious. So a question that many of us, let's just say collectively, we wanted to pose this question 
to the Christians, here's the question, right? Christians, why can't you just accept that not everyone believes what you believe and are not subject to the same punishment of hell according to your belief? Even though you can't prove these things, you can't prove a heaven, you can't prove a hell, you can't prove a God, therefore you can't prove a son of a God. Now when I say Jesus Christ is mythical, is not to say that there was some person called Jesus, aka Yahshua, was some person that was probably a rebel who was loved and mythical stories were created about him which later became called the Gospels. But the Jesus Christ, the son of a God, is mythical, but a actual rebel could be real. But why can't you accept that not everyone's going to believe what you believe when you don't even have any factual proof to show what you believe is real? It's about live and let live. Now, as coming out of religion, this is very simple. And then you say, well, why are you making a video? Why are you watching the video? If you don't want to, you ain't got to watch this video. And everything's all good. But if you're watching the video, don't question me on why I'm making the video. Because you don't have to watch it. But if you are watching the video, just believe what you believe and be cool with that. Like some people say, you know, uh, everybody's got an anus, but you don't have to show it. You can do what you do behind closed doors, because in many cases in the Bible, it tells you to pray in private. You don't have to pray at the graduation. You don't have to pray in, in, in the restaurant in front of everybody. You don't have to pray all out loud. When, when and According to the, the Gospels, Jesus said, pray in your prayer closet where no one sees you. There's no accolades for what you do privately. But if you pray openly and get and get your your accolades and rewards, then that, that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get your prayer answered. You'll get with exactly what you got. Everybody's thanking you for a good prayer, according to what Jesus said in the Gospels. But it's just a matter of just let people live, and you live. I mean, because the, the, I mean, Religion has gone too far and has gone on too long. Meaning, people are pushing their religion on people who don't want it. That's no different than, let's say, in America. And I'm going to get into this a little bit about the Christian nationalists. Uh, if somebody said, let's have prayer at this gathering. And they're like, yeah, pray, let's pray, let's pray to God. And then a uh, Hindu came up and started praying in their native language in India. We'd be like, hold up, hold up. That's not what we meant. No, that's not what we meant. But you wanted a prayer to God. No, we wanted a prayer to our God, not their God because their God isn't real. Our God is the one true God. And then you could say, well, how do you figure your God is the one true God and theirs isn't? And then they would probably say something about, well, it says in the Bible which is redundant because they could say, well, it also says, well, this says this in the Quran. Well, this says this in the other holy books there are, you know, that it, this says this in their holy books. So what makes your the one, yours the one true God? Whatever you would use to cancel out their God will be used to cancel out all the other gods and the ones they believe in and your own God. 
there's no criteria you could use to make one God the true God and the other gods false gods. The only difference is the one you believe in will be the one true God to you and your mind because your mind has already been adjusted to give credit to the one you've always believed in. Because if someone was sick and someone from five different religions showed up to this person and they all prayed for this person and then the person was healed, each, each of the five people would leave thinking, it was my prayer to my God that healed them. They just think that their God did. They would all leave with the same thing, thinking it was all their God. But yet not one of them could prove that their God is real. This is the whole thing with religion. There, there's nothing to be proven, but so much to be believed. And believing is not facts. And 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 you will look at the word theist, for those that don't know, the word theist are those who believe in a higher power or a god or gods. Take the same word theist and put an A in front of it. A theist is the person who does not believe in gods, in a god or gods, because there's a lack of evidence. There's nothing to prove it, so I don't want to believe it. And if it was real, I should be able to know it and not believe it. So this is where we stand. And then when it comes to the mental part of it, because of the cognitive dissonance, you know, people can't Think beyond what they've been taught to believe their entire lives. Those are the boundaries. Those are the boundaries. Uh, what is that movie? The M. Night Shyamalan movie. Where the people were basically Amish and lived amongst themselves. And they would only, they couldn't go but so far because there was a monster that would attack you if you left beyond the perimeters of where they lived. So they just didn't go out past that perimeter. But a boy got stabbed. I mean, it's a spoiler alert if you ain't never seen it. It's an old movie, about 20 years old, probably, I don't know. 15, 20 years old. If you haven't seen it, you should see it. The Village. M. Night Shyamalan, The Village. Real, I mean, the movie's good. It's understanding the point I'm making. Is that... Spo Let me just say this. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. If you have not seen M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan's movie, The Village, at this point, if you think you want to see it, do not listen to what I'm about to say. Okay? This is my disclaimer right here. Spoiler alert. If you have not seen M. Night Shyamalan's The Village, stop right here and skip. Don't, don't listen to what I'm saying. But they, these Amish people, we don't even know what time they were living in, they all lived together doing the Amish thing and no electricity, no technology. That's just how they lived, you know, and, and everything was fine and something happened and this boy liked the girl, and but the girl liked somebody else, if I recall right. Bottom line, one boy stabbed another boy. And the boy needed some medical assistance. They didn't have the supplies in the village to help the boy. So this girl was like, I'm going to go out and find somebody outside of us that might have supplies to help him. So they're like, but you can't go out there because if you leave out there, the monster will get you. And she's like, that's just a chance I'm going to have to take. And so she had the boy go with her. He got scared, ran off, left her. She ended up reaching out past the perimeter, past the monster. And she ran into a guy wearing a security suit at a wall. 
at a gate, you know, bars with the pillars wall. And she's like, I need help. Somebody got stabbed and needed medical supplies. And he got a truck and the whole nine says, stay here. And he goes to the security gate. Now, mind you, this girl, ain't, she ain't seen no car. She ain't never seen no car. She ain't seen nothing this guy's been wearing, none of this stuff. You know what? The girl was blind. That's what the whole catch was. She was blind. So she didn't see She didn't see the truck. She didn't see what the guy was wearing. She was blind. He went to the, the security guard went to the, to the security gate and was like, told the boss, who ironically was M. Night Shyamalan, making his cameo in the movie, was like, yo, the girl, they need supplies and the, somebody hurt. And the, he was like, well, look, give him the supplies. This guy years ago paid a lot of money to secure this plot of land for nobody to come bother it, for no airplanes to even fly over this land. Just keep it easy. We got a gravy job. It's a good job. We make a lot of money. It's a good job. Give her the supplies here and just keep it quiet. Don't tell nobody. Bottom line was these people who were living like they were living in the past were living in the current. But this guy had paid for them to, to, to be excluded like on an island but on regular land so that they would live like the Amish and, and, and stay with the, with, with the religion and could stay in the Bible thing like the Amish, basically. And she brought back the supplies and saved the boy. My point of all of that was, they're thinking, if you've been trained in this religion all your life, whatever your religion might be, your thinking can't go past, if I leave this perimeter, I will be attacked by the monster. That's what, it was the, the devil. If I go, if I study these things I shouldn't study, then I'm, my mind will be attacked by the devil. And, and it came to find out in the church, they had the monster suit and they kept it under the floorboard. And every once in a while, one of the, one of the elders, whoever, they would put the suit on and just run around, kind of run through the village to scare everybody, to remind them, don't venture past the perimeter. And that was the secret they showed. Yeah, we, that's, the monster is us. We are the monster. There's no real monster. And this is the same thing in religion. The devil? There is no devil. You can learn whatever you want to learn. You can read whatever you want to read. Research what you want to research. Go check it out. Learn. Nothing wrong with that. And that's what religion teaches you is stay here. Don't go, don't go too far because it's going to mess you up. And to kind of segue with that, I'm working on a video about Satan. Which is why when I did the video of Satan's God, I was like, mm, I was working on a video about that. And this guy drops his video, Satan's Guide to the Bible, which is a, it's a really good, knowledgeable video. It just, it tells the truth. So, that's so all I'm going to do is go through the Bible and we'll teach about Satan in the Bible. It's just a story. I, he's no big, bad, whatever you might think he is. No different than when they, the Satan's God in the Bible, which is everybody, oh, Satan teaching the Bible? It, it's not a big deal. If you're not following religion, it's, it's really not a big deal at all. It's no different than if I read the Odyssey or if I read, you know, I don't know if I read, if I, I saw the movie Saw, if I watched the movie It, if I'm watching the Friday the 13th, it's, it's, it's just a story and the, the, the character is not real. It's supposed to scare you. That's the point of it. If you got a good, the good is not even good if, don't, if it can't be reflected with an evil. How good is the good if, you, if it has nothing to, to fight against? Who wants to see an Avenger movie and they don't fight anybody? Who wants to watch Spider-Man just swinging around on the whole movie 
just to get where he's going. He's swinging and to go to class. He's swinging to go to work, and and he's swinging to go see Mary Jane, and that's the whole movie. But he never runs into an adversary. Who wants to watch that movie? What makes the movies good is you you gotta have the good and the bad. They gotta clash. That's what we want to see. Avengers wasn't good because they just had superpowers. It's because the folks came from outer space and they fought. That's what makes the movie good. I don't want to see the Hulk turn into the Hulk just to, just to hand uh, the other guy a sandwich. I want to see him fight. You know, turn into the Hulk, get to fighting. That's what we want to see. So the old stories in the Bible, all that, that, that's, come on. Jesus, it's, it's funny how, how God is just so prominent through the Old Testament, and he's so silent in the New Testament. He has like a cameo in the New Testament. That when he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Just a voice came from heaven and that was it. But then of course they're going to say, well, that's because now Jesus had come to speak for God, so that's why God didn't say anything anymore. And that's what we say. And we just hear about God, but everything he did in the Old Testament, he don't do in the New Testament. He used to be in the Old Testament, slaughter everybody. Slaughter the, the men, the women, the children, the old people, the animals. Kill, 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 kill. And then Jesus shows up and is like, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Like, dude, that's, that's, that's a change. That's not the same character. That is not the same God that was in the Old Testament that, that killed Achan and his whole family because he stole somebody's idol and kept and hid it in the camp. And, and, and God had that man and his whole family stoned. Kids, wife, everybody had to die because he stole an idol from somebody else. Now, now this God has changed his mind and said, oh, forgive you. You love your enemies, and it's just, it's, it's not the same. And it all makes sense when you understand it's, it's just another mythical story, but it has been embraced by society to be historical and to be real when in reality, archaeology has shown that the stories in the Bible, that we can't find them in history. Are there bits and pieces here with some of the kings? Are there real characters in the Bible? Yes, there are. And a lot of them that are in, most of them that are in there are in there with fabricated stories. The stories are fabricated. So, it is what it is. Come on. So, I'm not making a long video right here because I'm trying to get the other videos prepared, but I'm giving y'all something to tie you over until I, uh, drop this next video but uh so to the Christians for real I don't know if they watch this far in I'll turn it into a short but I mean you you believe what you believe it, it would be best if you know believe what you believe but don't push it on anybody else you want to believe behind closed doors do that you want to do that? Do that. But just don't go, like I, I, I seen people stand on the corner. I was at Walmart last week and they were standing out there with their little signs saying, Jesus love you, God love you. And yeah, I was petty. I said, eh. I rolled by with the thumbs down. Eh. Turn it down. Same way you out there pushing it. I mean, I, I can turn it down. Don't want it. Don't need it. That's what I chose to do. Don't want it. Don't need it. You're taking up space on the corner. You're bothering people. What y'all here bothering people for at Walmart? They ain't come out here to see you. They can't shop. Let them shop. Let me be honest with you. I don't like the Girl Scouts in front of the store. Because I didn't come here for no cookies and y'all harassing me. Just let me walk past y'all without asking if I want some cookies. If I want some cookies, let me say something to you. Well, you want to buy them cookies? Because now I got to tell you no. And I don't want to tell you no. I don't want to tell you anything. Because I didn't plan on you being there when I came there. You know, just let me walk on in and if I don't say nothing to you, don't say nothing to me. I'm not walking around in Walmart and stuff on the shelf jumping out at me saying, buy me, buy me. 
if I want it, I buy it. If I, I look at it, if I want it, I get it. But it doesn't say nothing to me, and I don't say nothing to it. That's just me. So I'm just saying, if I want some cookies, I'll come to you. If I don't want no cookies, don't come to me. But then, you, then I'm, I'm, I'm the big bad wolf, because I got to tell the little girl I don't want, want their cookies. And now y'all done caught up to my, to my game plan, because I used to tell them, oh, I don't have nothing but a card. I don't have no cash. I just got a card. And, uh, we got the card reader. Mm -mm, can't even do that no more. So now I I just got to duck y'all. Mm -mm, no, I don't want it. That's just me with religion and everything else. All right? That's all I'm saying. So uh, hit the like button if you got this far. I should have said in the beginning. Hit the like button. If you like the video, subscribe. Uh, I'm still... This video is part of some other stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, I want to make it one video. I don't want to make it a two-parter. Well, if you make a two-parter, that, that second part never gets as many views as that first part. That first part can get all the views and people just going about they've been they don't see the second part. So I want to make the video a one-parter. No matter how long it is, a one-parter and be done with it. So that's what I'm working on. Got my information. I just want to present it the right way. And I guess at this point, that's all I had to say about this. Like I said, again, join the Facebook group if you choose to join that. Again, thank y'all for watching my daughter's videos. They were, they, they were excited about that. Thank y'all for the love. Thank you for all the, the new viewers that are watching the videos, the new subscribers. I appreciate it. And I try to keep the videos coming as quickly as I can. And everybody out there, Enjoy your freedom from religion. And I'll always keep saying this. If hell is your last obstacle to being out, you're already out. If hell is the last obstacle, you're only in because of fear. You're already out. Just acknowledge that hell is not real. Come on out and be free and live your life. Enjoy yourself. So I will see y'all in the next video. Y'all take care out there. Peace.